This is Jim Shepard. Thank you very much for uh, answering a couple of questions. For oh, us. maybe three questions. Okay, yeah, three questions. Like we'll see. Um, you have done both the novel, novel form of writing, as well as short story, mm -hmm. and so we're wondering about uh, what it is that makes, what's the difference for you in terms of like writing one form over the other? Mm. Um, I've been more drawn recently to the analogy that I made in the Q&A about um, the, the short story as a kind of guerrilla form of warfare as opposed to what I would call the massed armies of the novel where you have to get all of this stuff together and get it ready and get it going. And, um, the pleasures of deploying all of that stuff, knowing that it's going to come somewhere down the road, um, and, the, and the pleasures of that um, more, and again, we're generalizing, but more unhurried design um, have been waning for me more. Um, so I've been actually more drawn to short stories, even though the subjects of my short stories, many people have said, well, this could be a novel. This is so much material, blah, 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 blah. Um, but in some ways, I'm attracted to the perversity of that as well. The, the sort of having somebody say, instead of having somebody say, wow, he got 400 pages out of the Dutch water defenses, having somebody say, wow, he, he dealt with all of that in 30 pages, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm, I'm kind of interested in the, the impossibility of it in some ways as well. This, this next question relates to the Q&A that we just had too. And uh, I'm wondering, considering the day, this day and age where fewer and fewer people read, what is, if you were to describe to your students, right. so to speak, um, what is the value of reading? <coughs> um, reading literature in particular, reading in general, is going to teach us about the world. Um, and it's going to teach us how to decode the world. And if we don't read, um, we're going to be poorer at decoding the world, which is, I think, why a lot of pernicious uh, influences in our society would prefer we not read, uh, because the better we are at um, breaking down um, duplicities, the better we are at seeing through uh, any number of powers that be that want to move us in whatever direction they want to move us. Um, so reading in general helps you figure out how to decode the world. Reading literature, I think, informs you about your own emotions. It informs you about human emotions in general. Um, and that's a very useful thing to learn, especially because I think it's one of the first steps in um, generating and increasing one's capacity for empathy. And if you don't generate and increase your capacity for empathy, you then simply won't care when other people are suffering and you're not, essentially. And in a society like ours that's heading more dramatically for haves and ha and sort of a have and have not division, um, I don't think the two are unrelated. I think there's a reason that um, the two are linked. We're reading less, we're reading less literature, and we're, getting, we're less worried in some ways about people who are not us. Um, so what I tell my students is most people are not going to read, especially literature, if your idea is to be a celebrity or to reach as many people as you possibly can reach, this is not the world to choose. Um, but if your idea is to do something you think is really important with those people who are going to put in the time, and maybe increase that group, then this is worth doing. on the subject of, um, if reading is important, but on the subject of creating a canon for the purposes of creating um, a well-read person or an educated uh, reader, moving to a different set of students that you have, your kids, because you've, you've raised an 18-year-old and raised a 13-year-old and I'm raising a 6-year-old, right. and so you've, um, you've covered, um, that's a lot of experience yeah. as a parent. And so if you created a canon for them, what would be in that canon? Well, what I do with my uh, boys, especially since, as I said before, I'm competing with screens, I'm competing with social media, I'm competing with movies, I want them to think of reading as something, A, that they would like to do, and B, as a, uh, a possible, a possible um, uh, option at any given moment. Right? Um, and the way to do that is not to say to them, okay, these are the five books you absolutely have to have read. Um, the way to do that is to get to know your kids and sort of say, I think I know what book you would really love. And then when they do turn out to really love that, they already, they're more amenable to the next recommendation. And they're also more amenable to my saying, and you know, if you like that, you'll probably like this. 
So my oldest went through a little stretch where he wasn't reading very much at all. He was sort of getting into social media very heavily. And I said, you know, you really should read Hunter Thompson's Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, which he absolutely loved. I knew he would. And he was like, well, I'm going to read more Hunter Thompson. So he went off and did that. And then he said, and who else is like this? And I said, well, there's a lot of people you could check out. And I started giving him other names. And sometimes he would go, I don't like this as much. And other times he would go, yeah, I like this guy too. Um, my middle son has gotten very interested in war. And I remember being like that as well as a, as a young boy. My father, I was the first person in my family to go to college. And my father, because he hadn't gone to college, had no idea how to produce his son that would go to college. But he thought the best way to do it was to have a lot of books about it. But because he had no um, collegiate training and he had no history of literature, he thought, well, if you're going to have a book, you might as well learn something from it. So he had only nonfiction about it. Um, and so what I would do is I would read, he would bring all the stuff home, and I would read the stuff that I found interesting. And he would quickly learn, okay, if I bring home a book on um, botany, he won't read it. If I bring home a book on volcanoes, he will read it. If I bring home a book on farming, he won't read it. If I bring home a book on war, he will read it. And so he started doing the same thing that I did with my kids, which was, oh, if you like that history of World War II, you'll love this book about the Battle of the Bulge. And, the idea is just get them reading, and get them reading as though it's not medicine. Um, the canon has to follow from that. And if the canon precedes it, I think all you've got is either glumly obedient kids sort of reading this to get their parents off their back, or kids who just rebel and won't read it. Um, and I'm not interested in either of those. So. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for being here. Would you sign a few books for I us? Would, I mean, yes.